I am a painter, which is a very archaic uh, expression. <laughs> and I often complain that uh, with all the technology that's around us, I'm still using a stick with hair on it. I've always been f fascinated with nature in general. And I as you know, I love science. And I think that um, art, the, the vehicle of our imagery, is a wonderful way to, to talk about science, um, to uh, have a conversation with, with the world about the beauty of the natural surroundings. Uh, you know, I'm particularly fascinated by astronomy, but physics in general, uh, why something is the way it is, what makes it uh, look the way it is. I, I love exploring the, um, the, the guts of, of uh, textures of things, um, but also the symbolism of what they, they ultimately represent. And um, I think a lot of my work is, it's at first glance, I mean, number one, you want your work to be physically attractive, but you also want it to have a message um, that, that stirs the imagination or a question that stirs the imagination of the viewer. You want to get them thinking about uh, something that's important to you. So how do you do that? Well, you, you focus on different items and, and uh, you, you make someone realize something perhaps they didn't before. It's kind of an awakening. In the 21st century, we are... I hate to use the word burden, but that's the word I, I choose. Um, we're burdened with the knowledge that our, our distant ancestors didn't possess. We know that the earth is, is a finite um, place. Uh, we know that we're on a, uh, a lifeboat that can only hold so many people. So these new uh, revelations about the earth, those are reflected, I think, in, in uh, culture as well, art being part of culture. So. Um, the representation of the fragility of the earth is something that uh, past artists, you know, 200 years ago, 500 years ago, they really didn't concern themselves with that. But I think you can't help uh, living in the time that we do but um, see the world as a very different place. You know, we're the, the first generation to see the earth from space. So, you know, here's this incredible blue marble uh, that we've seen from the moon and beyond via spacecraft. Um, that certainly must jar our concept of of who we are and why, why the shells yeah yeah well they're they're one of the more beautiful specimens in nature again this harmony that i'm talking about and uh the greeks were very aware of this sort of harmony of spirals and if you look through nature you'll see spirals in all kinds of fashions from the the spiral galaxies which are immense immense objects in the universe down to uh elementary particles as they spiral out in a, in a uh, collider. So spirals are created by, a, it's actually a probability formula, but again, it's, it's, it's nature speaking to us. It's nature saying, you know, this is how the system works. Isn't this a beautiful thing? So I think of, of shells as a, as a representation of nature's handiwork. Um, and I wonder if there are other beings in the universe, if they've built interstellar spaceships, you know, will they look like uh, a shell or will they look like Han Solo's uh, Millennium Falcon, you know, will they will they be really that sort of hardware or will they be more organic? Yeah. I think that's an interesting, interesting thought. I think that our progression with um, technology, computers, machines, I think will become more organic. So like, I think that's also represents the way I think about the future and the past.